Well, welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to this the first semi-final of the Henderson PSA. It's the Ro Rochelle Hobbs Open here at the Henderson Squash Club. And on court at the moment, we have uh, Emma Miller. She is the top seed up against uh, Lana Harrison, who is in the blue and the black. And these two players have played many, many times over the last year or so in domestic tournaments. And uh, certainly expecting an entertaining game with uh, the style of play, particularly Emma Miller, who likes to finish things off very quickly. Lana Harrison doesn't mind it being out there. And then we'll just have a look. And uh, we'll have a look here at this, this semi-final with Sean Wigan, who's joined me. And uh, Sean, what are you expecting from this particular semi-final? Yeah, it'll be a very interesting semi-final here. Of course, first big hit out of the year, so it'll be, it'll be very fascinating how these two, what these two have done over the summer. It's good, well, it's, and it's probably the first true test yeah, of yeah. the new year. The first couple of rounds, relatively straightforward for both players, uh, able to make it through. And so what we've seen, you know, the, the last one that we had was effectively the Nationals in early November at North Shore. And this is the, I guess this is get back into it really soon as well. I mean, we're in February. This is very early for a squash season. Well, this is the first of five straight big straight events here in the Buffett and Thompson series. So you got this one here at Henderson. Next week will be um, Men's and Women will be in Ipsum. Then it'll be the Open Open the following weekend at North Shore Squash Club, yep. followed by the Eastern Bay Plenty Open and Fakutane before it finishes off at Royal Oak. Yeah, I mean that's great. There's also a tournament that's going to be in Morin. <laughs> Also in Mar as well. Yeah, so I that's think that's piece, like. I think that's after War Oak the week yeah. after, yeah. I mean that, that's you know five to six weeks of squash. So for anybody who's a professional, semi professional, what a great opportunity. Particularly when you've got the challenger tournament for the men here and particularly the Auckland Open, which is uh, ten and five I think it is. Yeah. So that, that's that's great. And then also the woman I think War Oak is a three K for them yes, as well. That's correct. Yeah, no, it's 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 good because it does mean that players particularly that make a living from squash, albeit whether it's coaching or whether it's playing, are able to take that opportunity because it's been limited opportunities over the last almost 18 months. Yeah, and it'll, it'll also make it easier for them to also make a plan as well which ones they'll want to play rather than sort of having to have to play all these tournaments in a row, even after... The Morrinsville one, there's yeah. already a few planned in May. Yeah, a couple of satellites there. Yeah, yeah. already, and of course you've got Nationals, which is of course another big one in June, so it's already going to be a pretty, pretty busy schedule for the next four months or so. Uh, we're looking at this particular match, already raced out to four each, and, and, and neither player really... I mean, they're, they're going for a really. There's no well, sort of holding, well, holding. Well, Lana loves to really go for her shots, loves to hit it hard, so you always expect a good kill with her most of the time. And, of course, Emma has a, a very so solid play as well. Very nice short game as well, so it'll be very interesting to see how they both handle each other's games. See another good shot there for Emma, setting the play up. Retrieving, stays in. It'll be very interesting in this game to see how long Lana can stay in the points like that one there. Because she'll be doing probably a little bit more running in the in this game to Emma. Well, it was a bit of a double take there by uh, Emma Miller. She thought she had it, but the ball just sort of faded and dropped a lot more into that corner. Well, that that's probably one of one of Lana's strengths that no one really talked about everyone knows how hard she hits the ball but they don't really know also how much she fights for the ball as well go tries to get to every every ball so a bit of a slap at the ball there from emma miller on that forehand and uh, just targeting it a little bit too low and yeah, lana's seeing some pretty good link here sending the ball up here a few very good points for for her And so the second woman's semi-final, that is the second seed, Lauren Clark from Royal Plenty, up against uh, Shelley Kitchen. And uh, club captain in her own club here, former top 10 player. 
Um, she doesn't mind me saying, well, she has no choice. I'm going to say it that she's over 40 years old, but extremely fit no matter what. Oh, she's still got that same passion she had when yeah. she was a professional. She, she will. She I said to her that she's probably fitter now than what she was as a pro. Yeah, well, she always has that attitude. She, she'll give it her all on the court. Expect her to really push hard to get a lot of shots. Shots back. Ooh. Bit of a cheap area there from Lana there on the surf. Well, that's the thing. She had a two-point buffer, which is fantastic when you're 9-7 ahead. It's only so close to win, but then just giving one away with it, yeah, just it, forcing it too much. It's a coach's worst nightmare when they see someone make that sort of mistake. But she makes up for it, has two, two game balls here, to take the first game here. I'd like to see both of these players slow down and play the point a little bit more. It's not going to happen, though, is it? No, well, that's not the way they play. They like to... Really keep the ball low and hard. As you see, Lana's getting the first game there. Give her a good confidence boost. It they're getting well, eleven eight the first game there to Lana Harrison. Over. All right, we're into the second game now. And of course, the first going eleven eight to Lana Harrison. And Sean Wigan, there was no real pattern there, was there? I don't think you're going to get patterns with these two. No, well, and plus it's the first tournament of the year so expect them to be very rusty with how they play as well I think Emma sort of took things very easy after after nationals and then well even even then we're still at level two people have got to remember that so there is still restrictions on the crowd size that you can have which is 100 uh, possibly on Monday Auckland will move into level one with the rest of the country and that will make it easier for well, certainly for the Auckland Open, we're expecting some, a lot of people coming to that. But it's, you know, it was not even there. We didn't know we were having this until uh, late Wednesday night. Yeah, it was not till the announcement came that we were going down to level two that yeah. we got told it was going to be on. So it was certainly hard for, especially Aucklanders, being, you know, were not being able to do too much much practice over that time so it would be very hard to really get yourself ready for this sort of tournament especially when you've got pretty much one day to get yourself ready. Well the great thing is that for uh, the Auckland Open uh, that we're going to have pretty much a similar sort of entries to the national champs last year. I think there's only a couple of players out for the uh, for the men's for various reasons, and then the women's there'll be a couple of additions coming in as well. I think Winona, uh, Winona Joe is coming in, and uh, who else? A couple of Abby Palmer, I think, who had to yeah. play over this tournament. She'll be coming back into yeah. that as well. So there's a couple of additions, Natalie Sage as well. Uh, yeah, we it'll be, well, the, it's going to be some very good matches there. Look, if you look at the, the draw from the for the first round of both the men's yeah. and women's opens and of course being the open open expect a lot of entries for the lower divisions as well they want to just get involved at oh, playing. that's nice nice touch with well, it. what i like there with emma miller on that one sean uh, is that she just took the ball high up on her forehand didn't wasn't tempted to try and hit it hard just took the pace off well, that's what probably makes her slightly better than most of the other women's player, she can control the ball a lot better compared to say Lana who likes to who can hit the ball really well but really likes to hit it hard so then you see you see her few, few shots here just maybe going a bit too too much to the back wall rather than placing it compared to what Emma's been been doing. So it is a little bit of a just staying in it there Emma Miller. Uh make that um, Lana Harrison sorry. Just staying in this, however, oh, and then we get back. Yeah, you can tell Emma's starting to get her game going now. Maybe a bit slow at the beginning of the game, but now starting to that was time, the lob, sir. time the, her shots a lot better. That's that uh, lob serve that we've seen over the last couple of years that she does so well. Yeah. <laughs> Almost got away with a miss hit there. Yeah. And that was the take the pace off the ball when your opponents think yeah, it's going to come back. That's one of Lana's probably weaknesses is handling that slower ball. It's 
especially when she wants to try and go short. There's another one, just pace of the ball went a bit slower, a bit low, and well, we're still racing through this match as well. It's uh, yeah. not too many long rallies, and Emma won't mind this, just keeping the rally short. That's a very oh, nice shot there. Tried to actually move forward to the ball there that time from Lana. Well, there was a triple boast in there from Emma Miller at one stage. I reckon she was going to try and hit every single wall possible. And if there was another one, she would have hit that as well. But a in few, the end, uh, Lana Harrison. A few better drops touch. here from Lana in those last two points. Been on a good roll here. Six, nine, I think the score is now. Something in the men's that I recall from last year it was a satellite tournament here for the men at Henderson, and that was where Evan Williams uh, defeated uh, Elijah in the final. Uh, Comprehensively, I'm sure it was uh, here for a Yeah, I think satellite. that was the. That Evan won that tournament against Elijah, yeah, I think yeah. I remember that. Because that was Elijah's yeah. first time they'd yeah. made a uh, final yeah. uh, a tournament. It was beaten comprehensively, but yeah. there was just a different age gap and experience gap. Yeah, yeah, Elijah's a even, year old. Even, even to just even today, this looked a bit different on the court compared to the event last year where he was maybe a bit more fragile at the front of the court, but today he looked a bit more in control, mixing the pace up, losing a really good game there. Well, it's very rare that Emma uh, Miller actually says much on court. Uh, when she questions, she's... She doesn't really question that often, does well, she? Well, she just gets on with it. She just, she's certainly not one to ask, ask for too much. She just get, gets on with it, which probably makes her a tough opponent to hate when you're playing her. a bit of a surprise in the end. Yeah, but, but big comeback there from Lana. Yeah. So up by two games to love now, the first 11-8 uh, and the second 11-9. So uh, yeah, I think she's got to be pretty happy with that comeback and to give herself a two games to love lead. Well, Sean Wigan, this third game, it's all Lana Harrison's really, because uh, she's shown a good fight back in the second. A good lead in the first, so I don't know what we're going to expect for this, the, uh, the third one. Yeah, well, I think she was down like 9-4, I think, in that last game, so she's done well to come back from there. So it's going to be important now that she keeps the pressure going here. And just a look of... Uh, I wouldn't call it desperation, but uh, certainly in the middle looking up at the referees and just going, really? Yeah, not, not too many calls for the refs in this game. Oh, it's, it's quite nice, actually. Yeah, yeah, the refs won't mind this after some very tough men's matches to ref earlier today. Well, I sort of expect that uh, Lance against Devon will be an interesting one. Always any time Lance is in there, it's, it's always interesting. He'll, he'll make comments. Yeah, well... It'll be, it'll be also depend on how he backs up from our game earlier today. Yeah, like yeah. there wasn't too much that happened in our game. I mean, there was a lot of talk. You guys yeah. were both talking to each other a lot. Yeah, well, that's sort of how Lance says, and yeah. so, the only way you can sort of handle it is sort of just join in and let, just let him, <laughs> just <laughs> let him do it. It makes him work. Yeah. Especially if you can back up with a good point. Happens yeah. a few times in our match and. Then started getting a bit more quieter later on in the game. Yeah. Of course, oh. it it's almost that fade there. It looked as though Lana had that one on her racket, and uh, maybe it was just the pace actually beat her on it. Yeah, 
Yeah, some of Emma's drives today have just been going a little bit short. Oh, that's good. Cool. That's a nice shot there. Yeah, some of the shots just been going a bit short today. Certainly not quite got a game going today. Just getting a good lead here, but she would have learned from she the previous yeah. games that Lana will keep pushing to the end. Lana looking very good on her feet today, getting through a lot of balls. Well, we haven't really seen the unforced errors from Lana Harrison's game, which you perhaps traditionally see where she might get put under pressure and uh, she might try for too much. We haven't actually seen it in this match. Yeah, she had a period in that second game, maybe going for the wrong yeah. shot, going short, but she's been able to mix the pace up a lot more in this game compared to her game, say, last year, where she just really tried to hit the ball as hard as she could. Bit of a loose, nice one there, loose one there, though, from Lana. I think that was just playing so low over the team that it was always going to be difficult to get back. Got a loose one there. Few nice shots, few nice shots there from Emma. You know, a good lead here. Oh, she's got that 9-3. This is uh, reminiscent of the second game. Let's see if she can just pull it back and not let it go like yeah, last time. I don't time. think she'll want to make the same mistake as last time. That's a good shot. Oh, that's a nice. good shot. Good retrieving though from Lana, getting every single ball back. Oh, that's a good pick up there. Oh. And well yeah, that's done. a great team. rally there from both players. I mean, it was great retrieving by uh, Lana, and uh, in the end, Emma just played it well enough, stayed in it. Oh, that's a good shot. You now it's so difficult when. It? It shouldn't be so difficult, but when you've got this big lead yeah. and one point to actually win the game, okay. just she, just wanted, did. she just wanted off that one shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Sean, we're in this first semi-final with Lana Harrison having some trouble there with the door. I think you did as well earlier on. Yeah, I don't like it. Something's <laughs> wrong with that door there. It's not the... Give something a kick is the next best way. And... Just the look that we got there. <laughs> yeah, Henderson sold your doors out. <laughs> there was a struggle. There you go. You took the brains of uh, Emma Miller and John O from Squash New Zealand to sort that out. How many but people does it take to <laughs> how many people does it take to close the door? <laughs> you had issues this morning and <laughs> was, uh, I'm not saying they can actually get out, but uh, they're now in. So this is the game number four, and it is the top seed Emma Miller against Lana Harrison. Yeah, not, not the best start there from Lana, <laughs> a cheap error there. Probably frustrated with what happened just before. Ooh. That's a bit of fun. Good controlled play there by Lana Harrison. I feel like Harrison. that's what she's got to do a little bit more. Try and take the ball early when it goes short and even just putting in a counter drop. Okay. Emma out a bit, bit more. Her temptation is to drive through the ball as hard as possible. Yeah, right? exactly. And it would just be good to mix it up, especially if she can, because she's showing how quick she is on the court as well. Gets her that advantage to get onto the ball much earlier than what Emma could possibly do in that situation. 
Well, surprisingly, Sean, it's not quite as warm in here as, I mean, it's very warm outside, but the humidity hasn't hit the courts like it has done in the past. Well, to Henderson's fair, they've sort of opened a lot of the doors and windows up, so they've just been able to get a little bit more air in it compared to oh. previous experiences here. Yeah, even, even the national champs about three years ago, and that was in winter, and it was, yeah, well, the, it was so hot. Yeah, well, it wasn't too, it was just, it was, just it was really, it was, there was a lot of condensation on the court, so it had a lot of skidding when you yeah, hit the yeah. ball, so it was very hard to control the, control the game that well. So it was quite pleasant on the court, I mean, pleasant as in temperature-wise for yeah, you that when was, you were there? Yeah, certainly today it felt just the right temperature on the court today, which is what you would want in this sort of situation. Lean on the door. Don't touch the door, people. You might not be able to get in or out. Yeah, Emma not happy with the decision there, but she gets on with it straight away. Oh, nice drive yeah. there. So tight to the wall, wasn't it? Yeah, and she didn't hit the ball hard as well. She just focused on controlling the ball to the back. That sort of Wouldn't you say with just about every racket sport, and you're very familiar with a lot of them, that three-quarter pace is quite often a better option than full pace? Yeah, and so, yeah, certainly in a lot of racket sports, you want to control certain situations, especially in a defensive position. The key is when you're in trouble to just slow the ball down and just focus on placement rather than just trying to smack a hard, hard shot. So. And certainly squash is a great example of that because you need to have really good control to set up the points. There we go with the uh, stroke going the way of Emma Miller. The ball pretty much going between the legs of uh, Ryan House. And oh, looks as though this way we might be going five. 10 3. A few, a few more mistakes on Brian in this game. Bit. And the double there we go. So we are going five and that was 11-3 and the door opens at least. So uh, we are going five and this is the first of the women's series. So Sean, we're going into this, the fifth game here between Emma Miller and Lana Harrison. Oh, what, a, what a star for Lana in that, for that shot. Yeah. No, no, so she, no, no apology either, just... Did she hit more wall than ball by the sounds of it? <laughs> I'll try and coach that one. No, you can't coach those shots. <laughs> yeah, it's, all about, it's all about the racket. You buy, for, you buy the racket to use the frame as well, not just the strings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, goodness. All right, well, we're looking... Well, I, I don't know who's going to win this one because, again, no pattern, but we don't expect it from these guys. Well, well, I think the key here is how Lana gets herself back into this game right. because, especially in that last game, it just looked like she was all over the place just trying to rush things rather than just really in those first two games. Just slowed it down a little bit, just get her timing right, and then sort of set the ball up much a little bit more. Especially with Emma, she uses the pace really well. You hit the ball low and hard, but it goes short. She's able to use that pace to... Well, Sean, how fast is this court playing today? Yeah, well, when I played last night, the ball, the ball was flying straight away. So it's certainly showing to be a fast court. Okay. Maybe a little bit slower today compared to the matches yesterday, but certainly still have oh. some very quick rallies on the court. I don't know how she turned that into a winning shot because Emma left it so late to drive through it and then it just came back with no bounce at all. That was better for Lana there, just putting up a high ball there just to get the length. Emma didn't quite get the close right. Something Lana probably should try and do a little bit more in the game. So in comparison to say the main court at North Shore that the Nationals will play with, how, what's the speed of this court against that court? Well, the North Shore last on the Nationals was flying. On the but is that because so, of the heat? Well, the a little bit, it was a little bit of the heat as well because here at, here at Henderson you've got 
door opens in across just across the court so it's able to maybe get a little bit of air into it just making it a tad cooler compared to compared to what it could possibly be without the door being open. Oh, nice shot there yeah, from Emma. It's a good, good rally. Well played. There was st strategies in that one to try and get forward and take the ball. Well, short you can see she didn't just go for the winner. She focused more on just getting the ball tight. A bit of a collision here. Oh, that was not a great moment there. Well, if you're wondering what the delay has been, it's that uh, it was a racket to the head, the forehead of Lana Harrison. You can see on her head uh, a bit of strapping, a little bit of a bandage there. Uh, I guess you'd call it a gash more than anything else in her head. And who said squash is in a contact sport? <laughs> well, technically, <laughs> no. I mean, we're at five all in the fifth. It's very tight. Uh, these two players have had a, a good match. It uh, hasn't been too much physical contact. We're expecting that in some of the men's, or well, both of the men's semi-finals coming up. Yeah. Uh, this was just an accidental uh, bracket. Clipping well, the forehead would you think? Well, Emma's certainly not like that to <laughs> attack someone on purpose. She's certainly one of the more friendliest yeah. people on the court. It Even when she argues, she tries to bring a funny, a yeah. big grin out to... It wasn't gushing, a gushing from the gash, but yeah. it was... I, I think there's going to be a little bit of a lump there. Uh, yeah, it tomorrow. might be. Wouldn't want, wouldn't want to see it tomorrow morning if it's if it grows. Yeah. I'm sure her uh, young son will be very impressed that mum got a racket to the head and there was a big bruise and a bit of a gash there. And uh, I'm, I'm sure he will be very impressed. <laughs> but, uh, I have to see at, at five all. I mean, there's been no real pattern anyway throughout the whole match. But we'll have to see how how it affects Lana Harrison. Is she positive? Does she come out a little bit hesitant about going close to the uh, racket of Emma yeah. Miller's? It also affects Emma as well. You know, yeah. you've had a bit of a break as well. She had a bit of momentum going into the fifth, and now has this really long break. Can she sort of back it up? And even so, was she under a bit of pressure to call more less after what happened? Yeah, I think that was the right call to give a stroke there. Don't want another another hit as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, it was even a bit hesitant to actually swing again. But it was a great first round. And now uh, a very good uh, Drop from the backhand side. Oh, beautiful drive to the back there. Didn't hit the ball too hard. Just again, just controlled it really well to the back. And just died on that back corner. Emma just starting to make Lana move a bit now. Didn't quite have her feet in the right spot, or was it the racket spot? Yeah, well, she did a bit of moving there, so the legs were probably were feeling it by that point. It comes a very important point here for Lana. She won't want to get this, won't want to go too far behind. Oh, nice control. So it was the two point buffer. We've still got 8 6 there. there from Lana, some good placement there. Yeah, good work. Able to uh, put her opponent in a difficult position. One two point buffer here now for Emma. Now, from 9-7, I know we've seen it so many times that people have come back, but when you're at 9-7, it's yours to win, right? 
Well, you'd think so, but we've seen a lot of that. It can quickly change in so many matches today. That's well played from, it, from Lana there. There we go, one back. Eight, nine. She was a lot more patient during that uh, particular point. Yeah, she's been much more controlled since coming back on the court. Hasn't gone too much on the on the shots. There we go, back to nine. Order. Well, we said we didn't really know whose game it was, and we still don't. Yeah, and we're nine all in the fifth. All right, can't get any tighter than this. So a stroke there for Emma gives her match ball here. shots there. So they wouldn't want to miss that shot on the match match ball down. Oh, so well played just there from Emma. Just a good tight ball to the front. I mean it was tight to the front but also to the side yeah. balls. Just no room to move at all. So another match ball here, Lemon 10. to yeah. finish it off. Yeah. We'll play right. from both players here. That's a tough one. 12 at 10 in the fifth, and uh, in the middle goes through. Wow, they're in the biggest enemies against each other. Yeah, like, actually. Well, Sean Wigan, here we are with this, the second semi final. And on court in the blue and black, Shelly Kitchen up against Lauren Clark in the, in the orange, the peach. And this should be highly entertaining. We're both looking forward to this, just for the reaction and how well uh, Shelley Kitchen plays. Well, it's a bit of a blast in the past seeing her back playing in a tournament like this. Yeah, I mean, uh, she is 42 years old, and or 41, 42. I don't want to inflate it too much. Has had three children, but you can just see the way she moves. Is uh, this athleticism better? Former top 10 player, retired quite a number of years ago, but uh, still loves playing and being competitive. She's the club captain yeah. here at Henderson as well. Well, she still does a lot of work off the court as well. She doesn't necessarily play a lot on the court these days, but likes to keep herself fit as she can, so she keep, keeps pushing hard as well, much as she Well, here in Henderson, she uh, put a Facebook post up, or was it featured in a Facebook post where a number of the club members have gone for a 10k run, and uh, she did that. And still likes to train a little bit. Just it's out. Oh, it looked out. To it me. looked out to me. And it's only be a question mark after this if yeah. Shelly doesn't win it. Oh, there you go. Hey, hey. Nice one, really. Yeah, feeling it already. <laughs> Well, she was pressing into her forearm before the match. Oh, goodness. A bit, bit of a wild one there from Lauren there. And it's great to see Shelly on the first club captain. And uh, a little bit unfortunate that more people couldn't really come in to see it because she is very popular here mm -hmm. at the club. Well, not just popular here, but just popular in New Zealand overall. She does a lot of, did a bit of work for Squash New Zealand as well, so she's certainly a popular figure all around the country as well. Everyone knows her pretty well. And what we'll see as well is the way she'll play is probably just to, to push Lauren Clark a bit more into the areas, but she'll play it quite quickly. She's not going to want to stay out there for long, long rallies. Is well, she'll she? want to get on and off the court pretty quickly, so she'll certainly look to attack a lot more. Of course, she's got that power that sort of gives her that advantage and it's certainly showing so far in this game. So when we see a ball touch the red line up top, are we calling it straight away up? Because 
I don't know, some, sometimes we just all seem to see different things here. Like we've already seen a couple of calls. Yeah, close yeah to well, the, well, of course, if you don't know the rules, on the line is out. So, like, you sort of, yeah, it just snuck out on that. But surely if some part of the ball yeah. is underneath the line, touching part of the white. Well, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of like tennis where you can have just that 1% on yeah. the line, yeah. yet it's considered in even though 99 right. of it is sent as out. It's exactly the same here in yeah. squash. We of course, we don't have that technology yeah, to exactly. really see that, how close it is, so it's much harder to call those sort of... I know in my game against Lance, there were certainly some very close yeah. calls, close ones there, which could have gone anyone's way. And uh, just a bit of a message here from that uh, Shelley's a legend. This is from uh, is it Lana Thompson. I'm not sure what Lana is, but uh, thank you very much for that. Certainly playing very well at the moment. Yeah, well, she's up at the moment here. 9 4. Yeah, Ooh. yeah ten, like ten, game, 10 4 game ball. She's certainly racing through it very quickly. She did a similar thing this morning against Katie Templeton, sort of gone the court oh, very point. quickly. Nicely played the backhand, just sort of top of the ball, pretty much off her feet, and the ball was going to stay low. And uh, Shelley very proudly wearing Northland on her back, where well, she's from. She, well, she's on Kai Tai, so it makes perfect sense for her to. She's still very much a Northland girl, even though she lived in Northland and overseas for quite a while. As we come into the second game, and one of uh, Shelley Kitchen's little ones wandering in front of her camera, there you can see. That's the littlest one. Not really paying much attention to Mum either, who's on the court and up by one game to love. Well, just walking <laughs> really up, walking up to the yeah, got a little court now. Yeah, she <laughs> Shelley's telling Neil just to go and move the little one. So he don't, so he doesn't want that, those distractions. Yeah. Uh, very much a family club here at Henderson. And, uh, <laughs> Well, let's see if Shelley can continue to put the pressure on by really hustling and trying to make uh, Lauren Clark you know, stay in a bit longer. Is Shelley trying to finish it as quickly as possible. Well, Lauren needs to just get that, get her length going a little bit better, maybe just a bit too short in that first game. Just too many pulling short for Shelley to pounce on. She's certainly got that power to kill the ball, so something like that, you know, just maybe a bit too short oh, to. That's a nice play. And of course, with Shelly's experience, she'll put those balls away pretty easily. But if you can just set it up sort of like that, you know, it doesn't take a, that many shots for her to set it up, set it up for her to put the ball away. As certainly trouble keeping the little ones away from <laughs> the to come grab it. This is better from Lauren Clark, keeping Shelley in the rally. Yeah, making her move. It will also, of course, get her a little bit more tired Ooh. with the quick pace. So Lauren, of course, will have a little bit more fitness over Shelley, you would think. Making Shelly move, move her around. Yeah, that's a good play. Yeah, Shelly, she was up the front, just about the whole rally, and it was blind. It was just good hustling there, just yeah. forcing that extra. I mean, it was good play until the final shot, that is. Have a look and a supporter there from Texas and uh, John Levy. And, uh, some look at the there. Yeah, what have we got there, Sean? Yeah, so it looks like she, back when she was playing professional, she played one of the Texas tournaments in. 
in America. In Houston about 2008, yeah, 2008, that would yeah. sound about right. Yeah. yeah, she retired in 2010. And uh, this particular person, uh, Johnny uh, refereed her once or twice in the Tournament of Champions. And uh, it was a pleasure. Well, great that you've tuned in to watch now. And, uh, see, ooh, oh, great. Good. Look at the hustling there. It's a long rally for these two. Really good hustling from uh, Shelly Kitchen yeah. to stay on that one. And now 6-5. Now that, that'll take it out of her a little bit. Yeah, well she'll try and maybe slow it down a little bit more in this point here. You can see a few oh, high ones here. She gets a lucky one there. Yeah, well, it was probably a smart option just to slow it down a bit, mix the pace up. Of course, won't mind the rest there while retrieving the ball. Oh, that means it's yeah. dying. It was a nice chop on the ball. Yes, most slightly struggling with the slower pace here from Shelley. Just not going too hard with her shots now. And yeah, that's a well played shot there down. Just couldn't quite get a direction. The change of direction just didn't come as quick as she wanted. Yeah. Certainly a lot of power from Shelley Kitchen here. Yeah, well, that's one of her. Well, that's what she was renowned for when she was a professional. Just had that real good strike of the ball. Was that's it. Take it on the ball. Very quick play here. Right. Look at this. Right, really. You can see a lot of people tuning in for this match. Yeah. Good change of pace, great rally. And uh, another big rally there from Shelly showing she's still got. I think both of them are big rally, no matter what their age. But there was, uh, you could see Shelly Kitchen really just wanting to keep going. This is what I love, this is what I used to do. Well, that's her personality as well, Ooh. trying to fight for every point. She hates to give up on a point. Especially when it's in the crucial moments here, as we go she'll be to disappointed with that one. And this will be, she'll really love to get this one. So two love is a massive advantage compared to, of course, one all here. She knows this can be a stroke. Just put herself in a bad position there, uh, Lauren, and a stroke against her. So very important few points here for both players. I thought it just stayed <laughs> under that time. That was another one of our debatables on the line there, yeah. wasn't it? Although that was an easy stroke in the end there, so don't really need to go back to that one. Shelley has two game balls here to take a two love lead. Didn't quite time it right. She didn't quite need to push it that much. I mean, you wanted to hit the shot, but not quite as pushing. Still got game ball here, 9-10. And gets a stroke there, loose one there from Lauren. What did you think? Yeah, you I agree think, well, with that? it was a very loose ball there. Yeah. Sure. Well, sure, Wigan, we're into the third, or just at the start of the third game. And, of course, it's Shelley Kitchen in the blue and black with Northland proudly displayed uh, against Lauren Clark from Bay of Plenty. And Shelley taking the first two. Oh, there was a fight in both of them. And it's, she's playing what we expect. Although there was a couple of long rallies in that second game in particular, which may have taken their toll a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't look like Shelly's slowing down anytime soon. Still looks like she's failing through. You can really see just how competitive she is. She's just come back to it. 
for being on the tour, that's certainly what she'll, she'll be used to, just bouncing oh, through every point. What a beautiful shot that, that was, just died at the back corner. But when you're in the top 10 and you do well at the British Open and uh, various other tournaments. She's just got to be careful that she doesn't try to finish it too quickly. I mean, you know, play your style, but you're allowed to play one more shot. Yeah, she might not mind too much taking her rest game here if she needed, being up to love. There's a couple of loosens, isn't it? Yeah, certainly not, not the mistakes we saw in the first two games. Still think Lauren could maybe do a bit better pushing the ball to the back. A little bit better there, just mixing the pace up there. Well, much improved effort than this the third so far. And a 5-1 lead. A couple of errors into the 10 from uh, Shelley Kitchen and Lauren Clark just keep keeping her head. And there we go with the ball just hitting the back wall and going dead effectively. That's the second or third so far. Yeah, you don't want to hit the ball loose but against Shelley. She's Certainly got that nice. very nice strike of the ball to the back of the court. So a couple of points won back again. She lost a couple of uh, some uh, errors and now she's got a couple back. Well, a bit of a, luck, bit of a lucky Nick there, I really don't like that corner. Costed yeah. my game earlier <laughs> yeah, today. So. I saw a couple there. But certainly in this particular game so far, we've had about three or four hitting that forehand corner and staying very well. Yeah, a few mistakes here from Lauren, just trying to rush it. So a nice little comeback. And uh, just a little bit of a bang of the racket on the head. Don't do that too much. So a nice little comeback. Yeah, Shelly up 6-5 now after being 5-1 down. And Cindy, Cindy getting on a roll now. So Lauren needs to slow it down, play a longer yeah, get, rally. Yeah, get, get her rhythm going again because there's a lot of really short rallies here. And Shelly, Shelly certainly wouldn't mind that. Much smarter play here for Lauren, just trying to get her rhythm, get to the back. And forces the mistake there. Really needed that point because it's just maybe running away from her yeah. there. Okay, I'm calling that one out, Sean. I've got it this yeah, time. It was definitely out that time. It's <laughs> certainly a coach's worst nightmare seeing someone serve serve it out. Oh, that's a nice drive. And there's that, <laughs> that forehand sign again. Anything deep or close to the wall yeah, just well, seems she's, to be dying She's up. got very good power in that shot. You don't want to be setting it up for her that often. Nice pose. So almost got that back, yeah. but just went in the 10 there. Well, we're up to uh, match point. Which side are you going to go for? Yep, you've got it right. Here we go. Oh, and that is it in straight games too. So congratulations there to Shelly Kitchen. Winning in straight with uh, Lauren Clark and uh, Sean. This will be interesting tomorrow. Uh, yeah, well, Shelly Kitchen against Emma Miller. Well, Shelly certainly has the power to take on Emma. 